96,000 people watching. Oh, we are so back. 74 days from now. Can you imagine? 74 days. Then we gently move into that beautiful White House and we take over our country and we make it great again. We're going to win Arizona. We're going to defeat comrade Kamala Harris. And we're going to win back our beautiful White House. We're going to win it back. We're going to win it back in record force. We've seen how bad government can be. That's why it's a combination. You think it's good Trump is great for the world because he will the destroy the USA? Done destroying no. Our country is because, unbelievable and people have seen it. Because I don't think you understand, dude. Empires don't just like and quietly crumble, okay? They don't just like perish on their own without Ism little and common harm sense. to others. You have a common they do a shit ton of harm on their way out. Sense. You say what you want. Nice to say conservative, but really, with a party of common sense, we want fair elections, free elections, we want strong borders, we want a great military. But we're welcoming the support from millions of disaffected Democrats, independents, moderates, old-fashioned liberals who still believe in things like, little things like borders. I was there yesterday. That's a scary place. Like all of those people in Arizona who are radicalized towards the fucking border are never going to vote for Kamala Harris. They're primed, right? But there are probably young Hispanic voters, especially, but young voters in general that would very likely think about the Kamala Harris campaign in a different way if she communicated in a different fucking way. And look past our differences to unite around a Dude, thing they're, called. They're showing the entire rally because you know Trump was like, we're packing the halls and i want you to show the entire rally like this is a rally flex now you burn the american flag you go to jail for one year nobody's going to be burning the american flag anymore wait that's against the first amendment our opponents worship the deep state we want to obliterate the deep state slight difference our opponents thank you our opponents join with warmongers and neocons to wage endless wars, these wars that never end. We don't even know who the hell the country is that we're fighting. We believe that America is strongest when America is at peace. We want peace through strength. That's what we want. Like we had four years ago. We didn't have any wars. We reject censorship in all forms, and we believe in freedom, open debate, and fair, equal, and impartial justice under the constitutional rule of law. Our opponents slander us as a threat to democracy. Trump is a threat to democracy. No, they're a threat to democracy. She never even made it to the first state, the great state of Iowa, never made it. And now she's the one running. A little strange, isn't it? As you see, that's really a threat to democracy if you get right down to it, right? He's very low key. He's a very low key person, but he's highly respected. He is a great person. I've known him for so long, for the past 16 months, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I think that there's something to be said about how fucking there goes my hero. There's something to be said about how fucking they're just leaning into the weird shit, by the way. There's something to be said about like how unimaginably invested they are in being as weird as possible. Because here is a guy who somehow was way weirder than the Republicans. They did not pay for them. Oh, fuck no. Yeah. For the past 16 months, Bobby has run an extraordinary campaign for President of the United States. I know, because he also went after me a couple of times. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And I mean this sincerely. Had he been allowed to enter the Democrat primary, he would have easily beaten Joe Biden, but they wouldn't let him in. They put up rules. I've never seen rules like he had to have 65% of the vote in order to run, you know, little things like that. His candidacy has inspired millions and millions of Americans, raised critical issues that have been too long ignored in this country, and brought together people from across the political spectrum in a positive campaign, grounded in the American values of his father, Robert Kennedy, a great man, and his uncle, President John F. Kennedy. And I know that they are looking down right now, and they are very, very proud of Bobby. I'm proud of Bobby. You want to know the truth? Dude, Robert Kennedy Jr. described Trump before getting promised an admin job. A terrible human being, the worst president ever, and barely human. He probably Amazing. is a sociopath. Bro, we're going to get so much weirder. This campaign is going to get even fucking Life. weirder, dude. It's awesome. This is so sick. Has, who's been fighting for many years to try to end the corruption at CDC and FDA and USDA. 
And these institutions, these regulatory agencies are actually run by the big food processing companies, the big ag and the chemical companies that they're supposed to regulate. And he said to me that he'd been advising me for many years and on my campaign. And he told me that night that he was also advising President Trump. And he asked if I would talk to President Trump. And I said, of course. And about a few minutes later, I got a call from the president. And we talked. We had a very good talk. And then he invited me to come see him the next day. And I went to Minneapolis and saw him. We met again a couple of weeks later in Florida. And we talked about, not about the things that separate us, because we don't agree on everything, but on the values and the issues that bind us together. And one of the issues that he talked about was having safe food and ending the chronic disease epidemic for a very specific type of voter this is like the greatest move like there are so many americans don't mind all the fucking forever chemicals and everything they don't think about it at all but they also simultaneously hate modern medicine and think that like as long as you know you eat like a weird diet everything will be fixed in your life and there are a lot of people like that he wanted to end the censorship because the whole basis of american democracy is the free flow of information and we know that a government that can silence its opponents has license for any kind of atrocity because it's always the first step down that slippery slope to totalitarianism. I think there's also something really funny about RFK. Uh, there's so much. I love RFK so much. Fuck, man. I should have stolen the, the RFK Jr. hat that Brace had. God damn it. Okay. Like, he gave it to me. He, he let me wear it for a little bit, and I was just like, I should have just kept it. Great DNC rally, this one. Honestly, dude. What he's saying is pretty reasonable. Shut up. Shut up. Don't even fucking start. Okay. This man is anti-medicine, dude. He's anti-medicine. There is nothing reasonable about what he's saying. I love RFK Jr. Because he is such a contradictory character, right? He's what I like to call a crank magnet. Isn't this bad for Trump overall? Aren't most independents really repelled by this shit? A few pieces on his insane takes on medicine and CNN boosts his weird narrative of fuck ton. No. Yes. Um, Trump did this because... He's desperate. He did this because he wanted to either A, take out RFK from the ballots completely, or B, take out RFK from the ballots and get a fucking, uh, get some kind of uh, uh, endorsement from him because RFK was eating away at Trump's base. All of the triple polls that showed in swing states, the direct, uh, the direct doubleheader matchup between Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris looked a lot closer. And even in some instances, Donald Trump winning versus with RFK Jr. on the ticket, all of a sudden, he would take some from the Democratic Party, but he would take a shit ton more from Donald Trump. So he had to get him out because obviously this race for Trump is in the margins now. Like, that's a, that's a big boost. He'll get a big boost. Problem is, it will also probably scare away some of the more, like, moderate voters if he even has moderate fucking voters at all, like Trump at this point in his base of support. The thing is, what I want to talk about is how RFK is a crank magnet, but also incredibly contradictory as a figure. Because as a crank magnet, he presents himself as anti-establishment, despite the fact that he is from a literal political dynasty, the Kennedys. They are politics, okay? This is an American political f dynasty. That's number one. Number two, he was friends with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. While he is the guy who's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I want to take out the deep state. He's like, bro, you literally were homies with Jeffrey Epstein. Self-admitted homies with Jeffrey fucking Epstein. That's crazy. That's crazy. And on top of that, he is one of the, just like Donald Trump, biggest dick riders of Israel. It makes no sense that these crank guys are, are also simultaneously like going for two guys that are somehow more ultra Zionist than fucking Kamala Harris is. Like, that's crazy. No, they really were nasty. And then they say to me, sir, please stick to policy. Don't stick to personality. You should be nice to people, sir. You have to be nice. I go, I call them up. My geniuses, they get paid a fortune. Actually, they're not booing. That much. They're booing. But I call his up my people. I say, they're knocking the hell out of me. And you say, I shouldn't get personal. I have to get personal, don't I? I have to get personal. Yeah, obviously, these I guys love that personal. shit. They get personal. But I'm going to do my best. What's your view of down ballot voting? I love voting. I love down ballot voting. I'm a big advocate for down ballot voting. You should do it. You should also avoid seeing the three minute average at the top of the hour. Those are the two consistent policies at the Hassan broadcast. We're grateful.
thrilled to be joined tonight by the founder of Turning Point Action, a gentleman named Charlie Kirk. What a job he does. I said, Charlie, do me a favor. We got this thing won, but do me a favor, make sure they don't cheat. The only way they can do anything is if they cheat like hell, and we've been victims of that. Make sure they don't cheat, Charlie. We don't need the votes. We just want to make sure that they don't cheat. Very important. Oh, no, the crowd shots are definitely Trump's request. And Absolutely. Honestly, and, and he he slammed this fucking, he slammed this, this uh, meetup. 100p. Trump's I'll issue yes no. is that, like, yes. he sticks to these fucking losers. The Republicans before Trump at least would, like, cut losers out. Like, there would never be a moment like, like a Jamie Harrison getting to the top of the fucking, uh, being in charge of the Democratic Party, right? Like, Democrats love losers. Republicans historically used to cut losers, right? You lose, you're done. You snooze, you lose. You lose, you're out. Trump, on the other hand, values sycophants and loyalty more than anything else. So he fucking literally will stick to them and will just like keep pushing them through, even if they're genuinely unelectable people. This is a woman that's going to take. She Do I think RFK Jr. dropping out will have any major effects? No, it will have a minor effect. It will uncuck the polls a little bit for Trump in favor of Donald Trump. It'll make it a closer race for Donald Trump.